Hey, welcome. Thanks for checking out my video. I'm Tom Neiman. And today we're going to do a quick 10 minute book brief on a wonderful book called Watercolor Painting on the Trail by Judith Campbell. In less than 10 minutes, we're going to provide a quick summary of the book, present some of the ideas uh, that were offered up in this book, an outline of the structure of the book, and offer up some of my favorite quotes. And if this is not enough, just uh, a few days ago, I did a walkthrough and a read through on this book as well, right here on my channel. You can look for it, episode number 11 of my Wednesday walkthroughs live. For now, though, this 10 minute book brief should give you a good idea of what the book is all about and should help you determine whether or not you want to go out and purchase it. And by the way, I would suggest you do, especially if you're somebody that's interested in going out on the trail, taking a hike, and painting in watercolors or any other medium. And that's really what this book is all about. It's a step-by-step -step guide to the art and craft of landscape painting, specifically focusing in on watercolor. It offers all that and then some. It provides practical guidance and lessons on how to paint with watercolors, both in the field and in the studio, and offers insights into how to foster creativity and growth as an artist. The structure of the book, simple and straightforward. There's a preface, introduction. Uh, section one is comprised of several chapters. And it focuses on the tools for the artists, which uh, include chapter one, on location, setting up, setting out, and settling down. It's all about what you need to know and how to use it. So if you're wondering how to pack a kit to prepare yourself to go out in the field and paint, this is a great chapter. It'll show you exactly what you need. Chapter two is all about color, what it is, what it does, and it offers a great summary of the basics of practical color use and theory. Chapter three, the elements of art and the principles of design is all about the most basic things uh, we use and how we use them to make paintings look and feel good. Plant, uh, it's basically uh, painting design and composition. Chapter four, specific techniques and approaches to landscape subjects. This chapter is all about the review of the most basic and commonly used methods for applying watercolor to paper. If you're new to watercolor, it's an exceptionally helpful section. Section two is uh, entitled Using the Tools and Demonstrations. So there are an additional uh, five chapters here within this section that take you through step-by-step detailed instructions on how to paint specific scenes. And this section is accompanied by color photos. So really helpful. Uh, it definitely provides enough detailed instruction for you to complete these uh, scenes. And uh, for those that are, particularly those that are new to watercolor painting, it's a great idea maybe to try your hand at some of these scenes prior to going out into the field and dealing with the, some, some of the complexities of plein air painting and uh, hiking and painting. Uh, could be useful for those that are more experienced painters too. There's a lot to learn. Uh, new colors are introduced, new techniques are introduced, so definitely check it out. And then finally, section three. Uh, there is one chapter, or two chapters rather, in section three. Section three is entitled Getting Creative Next Steps. Chapter 10 covers the nature of painting, the nature of art, landscape techniques, it's all about getting introduced to interesting ideas that the author has to offer up, like mind doodling, which is a, a way that she uh, suggests folks get ready to paint. It's kind of a warm-up exercise, stream of consciousness sort of doodling, which uh, I know from personal experience can be really helpful. Uh, chapter 11 talks about expanding horizons, and there's some really good ideas presented in that chapter as well. Uh, mainly uh, some biographical ideas uh, brought forth through the experiences and gratitude shared by one of her older students. And there's an appendix, bibliography, index. There's a section about the author and then a whole section dedicated to the Appalachian Mountain Club, which I find particularly interesting as I live here in the Poconos currently and um, the Appalachian Trail runs right through our neck of the woods. So I'm definitely going to check that out. If this summary is uh, inadequate in any way, or if you'd like to find out more information, check out the read-through I did 
on my channel of this same book uh, on Wednesday walkthrough episode number 11. Uh, you will actually see me go through and read through a lot of the text within the book, not page by page, but just some of the highlights. So hopefully this summary gives you uh, enough insight to know whether or not this book's for you. If it doesn't, though, and you need more info, check out my Wednesday walkthrough episode number 11 on my channel. So we're going to jump into some of my favorite quotes. Here's one, uh, rhythm, something that is related at regular or predictable intervals gives a painting rhythm. Some paintings are more rhythmic than others. A nice example of a circular rhythm in a painting is Van Gogh's well-known painting, The Starry Night. And you probably recognize that painting. It's the one with the circular movement of the light in the sky, night sky, and it's uh, quite beautiful and definitely rhythmic. Unlike uh, traditional Chinese paintings where the student artist learns specific strokes for subjects, sometimes as many as 40 or 50 for trees alone, the Western artist's job is to look at patterns and or characteristic shapes as he or she chooses, leaning heavily on personal style and interpretation. Another quote here, remember that Roman trees are not built in a day, lifting out paint from water areas. Uh, this is a very handy skill. Lifting out is a way of creating reflections or light patterns in water or lightening the value of a given area. You can lift out a little color or take back almost to the white of your paper. Lifting out can save a painting that's gotten too dark. So there's actually two quotes there for the price of one. And uh, that whole process of lifting out was a game changer for me as someone being new to watercolor. Once I learned that, it helped me feel a lot more confident in my ability to accomplish what I set out to accomplish. And it also freed me up to play a little bit more when... Uh, when using watercolors. Next quote, mountains like skies, rocks, like skies and rocks have almost as many colors as you have on your palette. Distant mountains often look light purple, but the mountain illuminated by the setting sun can be a deep rose with splashes of orange and a snow-capped mountain can be made by leaving the, white, the paper white and painting the sky behind whatever color you see. A dusty gray mountain will appear to be indigo, not black, when framed by a yellow morning sky. Just be sure to look. And we have the last couple of quotes here that I captured that I listed as my favorite quotes within this book. Flowers come in a few basic shapes and combinations of these shapes. For example, daisies and cosmos are saucers. Peonies are basketballs. Chrysanthemums are half basketballs. Lilies are trumpets, tulips are cups, and daffodils are a combination of trumpets and saucers. Trees should not look like starched and ironed uh, tight. They are gently moving, changing things that deserve this quality in their representation. And then finally, good art needs some contrast, but not too much, or but I should say rather, but too much is like garlic. It takes over the stew and confuses the issue. I'm going to read that again. I chuckled the first time I read it. Good art needs some contrast, but too much is like garlic. It takes over the stew and confuses the issue. So the ultimate conclusion here, this summary coming in just under nine minutes. This book is an incredible resource for anyone interested in learning to paint, live more creatively, or anyone who is interested in painting in out in the outdoors. So uh, I would encourage you to check it out. Um, this particular copy of this book was gifted to me. I'm not sure of the, the retail price, but you can find it, order it online, or uh, perhaps maybe at your local uh, bookstore. Anyway, enjoy. Hopefully you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to check out some of the other videos on my channel, including the Wednesday walkthrough episode 11, where I actually read through quite a few pages of this wonderful book. Thanks for checking out my video. Thanks for checking out my artwork. Enjoy yourself and stay well.